In Creole Parametric, you can define the CNC manufacturing operations in order to machine your parts. One of those kinds of NC sequences is called profile milling. And with profile milling, you can machine the vertical or angled surfaces of your parts. This is very convenient for the outside profiles of your parts or the inside pockets, the vertical sidewalls. So let's start about out about creating a profile milling sequence. I will click on the command. And the first thing that we're going to define is the surface that we want to use as our machining references. And you can pick them one by one. I wanna grab the vertical surfaces around our reference part. It's a little easier if I click on the details button, which will open up the surface sets dialog box. I'm going to add a new set. This will help me loop surfaces. I'm going to select the bottom surface. I will get to that surface by tapping the right mouse button to query select to it. Then I will left click on it. And with that surface selected, I can then pick an edge and we'll grab all of the vertical surfaces around that anchor surface. So this is good. This is what I want. So I will click on the OK button and there we have our references. Be aware that you could specify surfaces that you want to omit from scallop, scallop height computation, but I am not going to do that. The next thing that I will do is select the tool that I want to use. And by default, it is using my previous tool. It was a face milling tool for the face milling sequence that is in the model. Let me choose a different one. I'm going to choose this one instead. And it asked me if I would like to update the sequence parameters by copying the cutting data. I'm going to say yes, even though I'll change some of the values later on. And if we go to the tool manager, we can see which tool that is. Here we have it. And I will cancel out of the dialog box. Yes, I'm going to exit out of there. Let me go to the tool preview. So there you can see what it looks like. And so now let me go to the parameters tab. And from the parameters tab, let's change some of the information in here. So for example, it has cut feed. I'm going to use a different value. Let's see another one that I want to change inside of here. Let's take a look at the step depth. I can use a bigger value than that based on the tool that I selected. And let's see, we also want to change our clearance distance. I want to use a slightly lower value for that one. And for the spindle speed, I'm going to use a value of 1000. So that is good for these basic parameters. If I click on this icon for editing the machine parameters, well, right now we're seeing just the basic parameters, but if you click on the all button, here we see all the different parameters that are available for this particular kind of sequence. If you want to narrow them down, you can use the drop down list. So you're only looking at feeds and speeds, cut depth and allowances, cutting motions, entry exit motions, machine settings, and general. But let's take a look at a deck for some information about some of the more important parameters. Okay, first off, let's talk about some of the parameters that control the lateral motion and the depth of the cuts. So you have prof increment, which is for the profile increment or the horizontal distance between the passes and number of profile passes. Also the allowance that you want to remain on your profile passes. You also have step depth for the depth of each cut. And then there's also another parameter axis shift that allows you to move the cutter location data up or down from what is calculated. And there are a number of different parameters for controlling lead in and lead out motions. So for example, you have cut com for cutter compensation, other ones like lead radius and controlling the tangent and normal lead steps over travel distance and your approach and exit distances. So with that, let's jump back into Creo Parametric and f finish configuring our sequence. All right, I'm not going to change any other additional parameters now. So I'm just gonna cancel out of the dialog box. I'll go and play around with a few of the parameters later on. 
But let's take a look at some of the other different tabs. We have a clearance tab. If we want to modify how the motion will retract, we can also specify start and end points. If I go to check surfaces, you can specify any surfaces that you want to be avoided while machining. From the options tab, we can define an axis that we want to use for approach and exit. Let's say I want to do that. I can create an axis on the fly in here. So let me go to the datum drop down menu on the right hand side of the ribbon. This allows me to create new datum features like axes. And when I click on that, it's going to pause the dashboard. Let me define my reference. I'm going to create it normal to this surface. And for my references, let me dimension it from this surface and this surface. And let's change this to a value of about 60. And then this one, I want it to be on the outside. Let me use a value of negative 25 to get it out there. So I'm happy with this axis. Let me click the OK button. Then I can resume the dashboard. And it automatically used that axis that I created as the approach axis. Let me make sure my axis display is turned on because I can also click in the collector to specify that as an exit axis. And so let me grab, oh wait, oh, here it is. A little blended into the screen there based on the angle that I was looking at, but I managed to grab it. You can also specify if this is for the first slice only or the last slice only, but let me just leave it as it is. Then you can customize the tool motion from the process tab, you can specify any times that you want to use in pro NC, or excuse me, pro process for NC if you want to devise your process plans in pro process. And the properties tab is another place where you could change the name of the feature or add comments that can be output to the cutter location file. And based on this, let's first off take a look at the cutter location data. And so, there we can see all the information that would be output for this particular NC sequence. Also, we have a button here that allows us to preview the profile path, the tool path that's going to be run in here. And right now it's just gonna come in and it's going to do one loop around the model. And I decide, you know what, I want it to come in. I wanna do a few more loops around there. So let me go back to my parameters and in this case, I'm gonna to have to go to the Edit Machining Parameters uh, button, and let me go to the Category drop-down list, and I'm going to narrow this down to, let's try Cutting Motions. Nope, wrong category. Let's go to Cut Depth and Allowances. Here we go. Here's the uh, profile increment and the number of passes. Let's say I wanted to do multiple passes around and work its way in. Let's start out with value of two. And I'll hit the enter key. And let's see, for the profile increment, let's use a value of three based on the size of the model. I'm happy with this. Let's click the OK button. And so now you can see that we're getting multiple passes laterally as we are creating our motion. And so we can now take a look at what this is going to look like. Let me go to my material removal simulation icon which is available at the, drop, at the bottom of the drop-down list. Let me crank up the precision a little bit. Yes, it's going to do some more calculations. And let me hit the play simulation button. I'm not going to adjust the speed. Let's just play this and we can see it come in and move around there. And it's working its way down as it's going through the second slice. And there we go. There it exited. And so one thing that I want to note is that we do have some extra material that is left over here. Now, I will admit I am not a manufacturing expert. I know one way that I could get rid of this liver is by increasing the number of passes. In terms of these other different areas here, if we wanted to get rid of them we could use some volume machining operations. Maybe I wanna do a volume before I even go into the profile milling sequence. But anyhow, let me close here and close out of the material removal simulation. 
Let me show you if I just go to the cut depth and allowances category. And if I change the number of profile passes, say to a value of four and click the OK button. And again, you can see the preview of the tool pass because we have this selected. Let me go back to the material removal simulation. And I'm going to leave the precision as low and let's just play the simulation. I'm even going to crank up the speed a little bit this time and hit the play button. And you can see based on this one, we ended up cutting out that little sliver that we ended up over on the right hand side. So this is good. So I can close here and then close the material removal simulation. I'm happy with this sequence. So I will hit the check mark in order to complete that. And let me zoom out a little bit and I'm going to turn off my axis display. One last thing to mention, I had intended to use a solid tool for this demonstration, but I realized that when I retrieved this model, it did not find the solid tool. So I had to reread it in. Let's try taking a look at this. We will right click on the profile milling sequence and then play the path. And so now you can see my solid tool that I like to use. Let me hit the play button and there we can watch the motion. And again, it always looks much better when you're using a solid tool rather than a configured tool. So there you have it. That's how you can configure a profile milling sequence for your CNC manufacturing.